Hey folks, in this walkthrough, we're going to go through the process of um, setting up Python 2 and Python 3 to play nicely and run together on your Mac computer. We're also going to install a general purpose code editor called Atom, and we're going to see how we can run Python programs from the terminal on our Macs. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do um, is install Atom. So you open up a web browser and go to atom.io. And then you can, from right here, download the Mac version of Atom. Uh, and once that downloads, you can install it. I already have it installed. Um, just takes a few seconds. So if you need to install it, just go ahead and pause the video here and install Atom. Um, and rejoin us when you're ready. OK. Yeah, so in general, we, I already, like I said, I already have Atom installed. And there's already a few things in here that I, that I have installed that I'm going to show you how they work. So in some cases, some of the things you'll see in this walkthrough are going to be a little bit different than what you would see if you're doing this from scratch. Uh, but I'll explain what you should be seeing. It doesn't make sense for me to go through my, my, my uh, computer and, and wipe everything out just for the sake of doing this walkthrough. So, uh, so we have Adam now. That's great. Um, we now want to sort of see what's already available uh, in terms of Python. It turns out there's already a Python installed on our system by default. So go ahead and open up Spotlight. and. If you're not familiar with Spotlight, it just gives you an easy way to launch programs without digging through your, your operating system's file structure. So uh, if I just start typing terminal, it'll bring up and suggest the terminal program. That is indeed what I want. Uh, yours is probably going to look a little bit different. I've got some, some different settings for my prompt here and how this stuff looks. Um, so yours might look a little bit different. I've also made the font bigger for the purposes of this tutorial. One thing I do want to do right away, though, is go down to the dock here. Right click on the terminal icon, and under options, select keep in dock. Okay? Another way to do that is to just drag it over to the left somewhere, and then once you quit it, it will remain in the dock and it'll be easy to launch. We're going to be using terminal a lot going forward as we learn how to code more and more, so we want it to be easily accessible. Um, so there I have terminal in the dock. I can just launch it right there. So I told you Python is already installed on our system. We can see that that's true by typing Python space dash capital V. Everything here is case sensitive. Python is all lowercase dash capital V. That stands for version. It's, it says tell me the version of the Python command. In this case it says that um, Python refers to version Python 2.7.11 which is great. We want to install both Python 2 and 3. We already have Python 2 installed uh, so we're kind of halfway there. Okay so to install Python 3 we're going to, uh, well, how did Python get here? Let me explain that first. Python version 2 currently is the default version of Python installed on Mac OS X. This is because um, the people at Apple, they use Python when they're, uh, for their various pieces of the operating system, and they just install it by default on the system. So out of the box, every Mac computer currently sold, every current up-to-date version of OS X has Python 2.7 on it. Okay, so we want to get Python 3 as well, but we don't want it to conflict with the existing Python version. We don't want it to step on uh, stuff that was pre-installed by the folks at Apple. So the way to do that is to use a really friendly package manager system. So it's called Homebrew, and you can find it by going to the URL brew.sh in your browser. And it's really easy to install. This, we're just going to run this one single command at the command line. Go ahead and just click into that field until everything's highlighted. You can copy it. I'm just going to use Command C to copy. Go back over to your terminal and paste it in there and hit enter. Now in this case um, you're going to see a lot something significantly different from this. I already have Homebrew installed so it just says hey dummy you don't need to do this again. Uh, you're going to see just a stream of messages as as this Ruby script goes through the process of installing Homebrew on your machine. So if for some reason that doesn't work for you, um, talk to a fellow student that has a Mac that, that was able to get it successfully installed, Google your problem on, um, on the internet, look in Stack Overflow, ask an instructor or a TF, and, and get going on Homebrew. So once you have Homebrew installed, you can install packages directly from the command line using the command brew install. So if I say brew install Python 3, this is going to install Python 3, and it's going to do it in a really nice way. It's going to do it in a way that immediately makes that Python 3 command accessible by putting it in my path. It's also going to put it in a separate directory from most of my system uh, installation, uh, system installed programs, so that it's not going to conflict with anything that 
uh, the operating system is installed or somebody else might have installed. So um, these are some of the some of the just briefly speaking in a hand wavy kind of way some of the advantages of homebrew. And there are a lot of packages you can install via homebrew. So I encourage encourage you to kind of dig a little bit deeper on their site and kind of read more about what homebrew can do for you. So if you do that. Um, again, this is going to report to me that Python 3.5 is already installed. For you, you would see a stream of commands as Homebrew goes out to the internet to fetch the correct, the correct files uh, and install them on your machine. Okay, so you can verify that Python 3 is installed after you're done there by just typing Python 3 space dash V. And that does report that Python 3.5.1 is available via that command. Um, if I type just Python 3, I get what's called an interactive Python shell, or a REPL. Um, REPL is the acronym R-E-P-L. It means read, evaluate, print, loop. And what that just means is that if I type a command at the shell, at this prompt, just any kind of single Python command, um, and hit enter, what's going to happen is the interpreter is first going to read that piece of code. It's going to evaluate it. In other words, put it through the Python interpreter. It's going to print out the results, and then it's going to loop. It's going to let me do the same thing again. So um, there we see, just as advertised, uh, this interpreter read the text that I typed in. It evaluated it, printed out the results, and then it prompted me again. So I can continue to do this all day. I can say name equals input. What is your name? Anything that you can do in a single line of Python code in a file you can do here. Now, I should have a name variable with the value Chris in it. If I just type name and hit enter, it'll print out the value of that uh, variable. I don't need to go to the trouble of doing this. Um, notice that there's a little bit difference here. This, these, these ticks here, when I just type name, these ticks are inserted to tell me that this is a variable of type string. Here, this is just straight output, um, which is always essentially a string. So there you go. Um, you can get out of the Python shell by just typing exit, and you're back to your terminal prompt. And I encourage you to use the Python shell, uh, the Python REPL, on a regular basis just to try things out. It's a way to just really quickly uh, try out commands or functions uh, without setting up a file and, and you know going to all this extra effort to, to just see how something small works. So it's very useful. So I have Python 2 and Python 3 installed on my machine. Let's see how we can actually run um, Python code on our machine. So you already have Atom installed. I'm going to go ahead and launch Atom. I already have mine down in my uh, in my dock. If you didn't have it in your dock, again, you could go to Spotlight and then type in Atom. And then you could launch it from there. And then once you launched it, you could add it to your dock by right-clicking and selecting Options, Keep in Dock. OK, so now we just have an empty editor. Let me go and create a new file. Um, great. So I want a place to store this file, right? So let's go back to our terminal. Generally, you're going to want to keep all of your code in one kind of central directory. You can have, you know, it can be organized below that with subdirectories for different projects, but it's a good idea to have one place in your home directory or close to the top of that directory tree for your code. So let's go ahead and make a new directory just called code. I'm going to do mkdir, make dir, which is the command to make a directory, and I'm going to name my new directory code. All right. I will then type ls just to ensure that that actually happened. And there's a lot of garbage here, but if you look over here, you see that we do now have a directory named code. Let's go into that directory. You can cd into code. Notice that my prompt changed here, indicating that I'm in the code directory. If your prompt looks different and you're not really sure where you are at any point in time when you're in a terminal, you can type pwd. And that stands for print working directory. That will, that will show you the directory that you're currently in. Whenever you're at a prompt, a command line prompt, you're always in a specific place within your file system. That's an important concept to remember, that you're always in a specific place. So um, if you're not sure where you are or you're having problems, it could be related to being in the wrong directory, um, et cetera. OK, so now I'm in my code directory. That's great. Let's go back to Atom. And now I can save my, my new file to that directory. Um, and I happen to already be there for some reason. So if you weren't already there, you can go to your home directory, select code, and then I'm going to save as hello.py. Now, .py is the extension used for Python programs. Um, that does a couple of things. One is it signifies to, to just anybody using that file that it's a Python program. It also tells Atom 
that it should treat this file like a Python file. So when it's applying syntax highlighting or other rules uh, or other integrations, it should treat this file as Python code. Before we type any code, though, we want to go and check a setting within Atom. Um, Python is particular about white space, and so this is a white space related setting. So go to Atom, Preferences, and in just the, the first settings screen that opens up the core settings, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll see a field called tab link. This is by default two, typically, uh, when you install Atom for the first time. Um, so set this to four. Four is the tab link that we want to use generally when we're writing Python code. Um, and so, you know, tabs are, are obviously important in Python because they, if you indent by a tab, that can signify things such as a function body or a loop body, et cetera. Um, and if that doesn't look right or isn't set up correctly, your code won't run properly. So a tab length of four gives us, gives us some nice visual separation, so it makes our code easier to read and easier to tell which code is actually within a function or a loop or a conditional and which code is not. The tab type can also affect your Python code. This generally should be fine if it's set to auto. Um, soft tabs means that whenever you hit the tab key, instead of a tab character being inserted into your, into your file, um, four spaces will be inserted into your file or whatever the, the value of tab length is. It's going to insert spaces instead of tab characters. Um, hard tabs mean that whenever you hit the tab key, an actual tab character will be inserted into your file. So a tab character, you can think of that just as the same as uh, any other kind of um, white space character that you, that you can't see, like a new line character or a space character. Uh, so a tab is, a, is yet a different type of uh, similarly non-visible uh, white space character. So auto means that, that Adam's going to be able, is going to try to auto detect whether or not you're using hard or soft tabs when you open your file. If it can't figure it out, it's going to default to soft tabs. So generally auto is fine. If you're having trouble with a particular Python file, maybe a file that somebody else wrote, you might go in and explicitly set it to soft tabs. Um, okay, that should be good. Now in our file, let's just go ahead and write a quick hello world program. and save it. I used uh, command S there. You can also save it from the file menu. And then let's go to our terminal here. Um, we'll just do an ls just to make sure we, we saved our file in the right spot. And sure enough, in my code directory there, I have a file called hello.py. Now I'm going to run it. And I run it just by typing python3 space and then the name of the file. And there we go. Hello world. It worked. Um, notice one thing I did there was that I typed in python3 and then you might have, if you're quick, you might have noticed that I hit tab at some point and the rest of the hello.py file name just appeared. That's called tab completion. When you're in a terminal, you can generally hit, uh, you can start typing a command or a file name and hit tab. And if the terminal is able to figure out exactly what you mean, if there's only one way to complete that, um, that thing that you've started typing, it will auto complete it for you. So that's just a quick shortcut, um, a way to save yourself some keystrokes. I can also run this with Python 2. And in this case, it'll work exactly the same way. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's how to run both Python 2 and 3, write your own Python code, and run it from the terminal in Mac OS X.